All right, everyone, a few days ago, Twitter announced a new policy that really should have literally everybody in the country completely up in arms, which is that Twitter, as a communications platform, that platforms government goods, services, and figures, in which you can get live USGS and weather alerts from the government, taxpayer-funded, which is therefore technically, insofar as it's platforming those things, beholden to the First Amendment, at least at a rudimentary level, has decided that it's going to start demoting sort of putting up a, a wall between you and and edgy tweets by world leaders. And this was in response to people who said, well, Trump breaks your terms of service. How? Eh, we're not entirely sure. What, is it because he believes in borders? Or is it because he refuses to uh, modulate his speech and sometimes he lashes out at people who have done the same thing to him? By the way, if Twitter bans people for off-site behavior now, if someone says, if Maxine Waters says nasty shit about Trump, in an interview, shouldn't that be, cause her to get banned? Like, under the auspices of the same line of reasoning as the people who are so up in arms about Orange Man Bad, wouldn't that be a problem? And by the way, this is an indirect attempt to influence U.S. politics, is it not? If there's any differential between how Trump or any other politician, like a Crenshaw or something, is treated, and how someone who's like a liberal is treated, it will inevitably affect U.S. politics. This is election, this is real election interference. Not the Ma Russia bullshit. Oh, we bought $100,000 worth of Facebook ads in Wisconsin. We probably changed two people's fucking votes. Maybe. Maybe nobody's. Maybe it was a net negative because people thought the memes were cringy. This is an attempt by billionaires running multi-billion dollar companies to directly impact U.S. politics. And you know that one of the reasons is this. One of the reasons why Silicon Valley is acting this way, despite the fact that they have nothing technically to gain from it at all, is because... What happens is that morally outraged social justice pink-haired bullshitters get together and constantly ramble and harangue, and the legacy media aids them in doing this because it's part of a witch hunt moral panic. It's like the satanic panic, the red scare, um, you know, the acid craze. It's like people worrying about heavy metal or grunge in the 90s or something. It's the same shit. It's, it's like Eminem or something. It's the same shit, different asshole. Think of the children, break down a society, must stop extremism, must stop violence. If we only did something differently, all problems in society would go away. That's basically the coward's mentality that gets fed upon like, like a parasite by CNN and Fox and groups like that. They've been doing it forever. So they come and they look at Silicon Valley and they see things they don't like on Twitter. They see an opinion they didn't like on a YouTube video. They said somebody posted something on Facebook. It offended them. I was watching George Carlin the other day, some of his stand-up. I saw some new material I hadn't seen before, like the one on soft language. My goodness, what a fucking sage. <laughs> Can that not be completely applied to everything related to the tech arguments? Like, uh, he was talking about, like, uh, people hear, you know, morons on the radio, like, like, you hear the shock jock, you heard the music you didn't like, well, there are knobs on the radio for a reason, change the channel. It used to be, like, I remember there was a song called Raped by the FCC by Cheap Sex, it's a punk band, I don't know if they're still active, I always liked that, I, you know, it was like, uh, I've been raped by the FCC, Bush would take my freedom from me, where's all the protest music now, oh, that's right, it got kicked off the radio entirely. And then the liberals sold out. They believe in censorship now. But Twitter's policy now is that if Trump says something perceived of as being edgy, there will be a little thing you have to click through that says this might be offensive and it's not going to get notified to people. Is this not problematic? Why am I seeing so little actual outrage at the fact that this is happening? Is this one of those boil the frog situations where Silicon Valley has applied so many layers of convoluted bullshit censorship that people have just stopped reacting? By the way, that's, you know, when the paradigm begins to break down is around that point. It becomes passe, basically. You're like, ah, fuck it, sort of. Uh, and, then, and then it just boils down to political activism, I suppose, at that point. We desperately need Trump and people like him who understand that censorship is a bad thing and anathema to the concept of a free and, and peaceful society. We desperately need them to see behind the veil of this being a political issue because it's really not. Uh, into the realm of it being a money issue, which is that what happens is the social justice warriors put pressure on Silicon Valley through the legacy media, hit pieces essentially. And they get they get jittery because they're publicly traded or they get jittery because they're worried the investors will pull out. And then they put pressure on advertisers. Because right now the big tech firms are still ad driven by and large. So if a bunch of companies, the, the pink haired social justice warriors, 10 of them show up to protest, they don't care. 
Sundar Pichai does not look out his window, see the ten people inevitably protesting Silicon Valley that morning, and start worrying into his cup of soy latte. He doesn't give a fuck. But if some executive from NBC, and an executive from GM, and an executive committee from, from Merrill Lynch or something, if they come and they say to Sundar Pichai, hey, we've got a problem. Look at the, we've got screen grabs here of, of this content and that content. Why is YouTube allowing this? Why does Google aggregate this search result? Why is this in Google News? We're offended and we're fucking rich. He does care about that. And all of these little leftist idiots the pink-haired crowd, you think that you're the ones primarily driving this? Like the Jared Holtz and people like the, oh yeah, we use it, it's all for decency. Uh, we gotta keep our children safe from Nazis and stuff. You're not stopping Nazis. What you're doing is pissing people off that are trying to make a living and you're being a pawn. You're a pawn for billionaires and multi-millionaires. A bunch of rich people who don't want you hearing the truth. They're tired of competing with people like me. We're the ones you're screwing. And you're not screwing some 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 jackboot wearing goofball with a swastika on his forehead. He's still gonna be a jackboot wearing goofball with a swastika on his forehead. He probably I doubt that you've really inconvenienced his life. But yes, I'm sure that he is a pillar of his community. And if you just try to deplatform him on Twitter, he'll go away magically. No, he's not. He's still there doing exactly what he did before. Now he'll do it ten times more because he can't even get the shitty job he probably had before. Congratulations, by the way, to ruining his wife and kids, uh, you know, uh, life too. They don't really care though. They think that guilt by association is a powerful thing. They literally see nothing wrong with like making people's kids cry in the most literal sense. As long as it saves some other fictitious children the problem of going on Facebook and seeing something edgy. They saw Moon Man. They saw a Pepe coming out. I hear they saw a Trump quote. Oh my goodness. But Twitter's r new rule is fucking insane. It's also unconstitutional. Twitter is not a fully private company anymore. It platforms government figures and allows people to interact with them. It platforms business entities that are tied with, regulated by, take grants from, and contracts to government. It platforms government services explicitly taxpayer funded. Like for instance, you can at any time contact all sorts of businesses live on Twitter. Like, like instead of using email, instead of using like f phone call, which you're on hold forever, you can DM their Twitter pages. Well, why shouldn't I be privy to that? Some of these businesses have government contracts or hyper like the airline industry. Airlines aren't hundred percent private. There are certain things they simply cannot do because they're, they're bound to certain aspects of the U.S. Constitution by default with U.S. airlines because of the importance of their travel. They got, they like the air traffic controllers. They can't just suddenly go on strike and leave the whole nation hemorrhaging. They got regulated in that way. We need to do the same to Silicon Valley, and I don't mean regulate, turn them into a bunch of monopolies. We need an internet bill of rights to stop this from happening. There was no problem on the internet and there still is no problem on the internet that isn't solved by leaving the internet completely alone. It was already a great place to be. It was already a, a fairly safe place to be as well. The idea, the mythical notion that the internet has been, is suddenly full of Nazis and extremists and terrorism and things like that is a, is a lie. It's simply not true. What happened is that the small element, the small kernel of hateful or extremist material there got amplified by the legacy media for money reasons. They decided to take the existence of a few people that actually are genuinely violent, and they decided to take that same moniker, fudge their language around, aim it at all independent content creators, and then attack Silicon Valley to try to knock us off so they would stop hemorrhaging support. And a bunch of advertising firms went along with it because they don't want the legacy media attacking them. They're perfectly content. They're companies. They're there to make money. They're not there to be benevolent and save your kids. My goodness, if you, if you literally trust your kids to corporations, corporate interests, and billionaires, not a very good parent now, are you? You wouldn't drive up to the GM building and say, say to the manager, that, hey, I'm leaving my kid here for five hours. I'm sure that you'll take good care of him. You wouldn't do that. Then why do you trust them to literally control what you see in here as well? It's not just your kids. Why don't you have a second YouTube for people under 18 because they're too dumb to encounter the real world, I guess. They're too fucking stupid to encounter real stuff, so, you know, to have actual real commentary. They're only allowed to watch the kids' news channel that'll feed them all of the proper shit that Google wants them to know. Why don't you kick them off Facebook entirely? Hell, kick everyone off Facebook. It's a dead platform anyway. 
All it is is a messaging service where people shitpost each other. Twitter. Fucking who cares? There's a bunch of porn on Twitter. Why is it? It's very funny because I remember like 15 years ago, they're like, oh my God, there's porn on the internet. Oh my God, there's naked women. There's people, people fucking vegetables and weird shit. There's a hen tank. Oh my God, and little Jimmy will get sexual ideas. It's terrible, by the way, you know, to, to have sex or, or sexual thought. Terrible degeneracy. Nobody ever did that before the internet. Uh, it, it, terrible. Porn, porn, porn. Now it's allowed on a lot of these sites. Like there's, there's like, you know, birthing videos, medical porn, which is the speculums and shit like that and stuff like that. Yeah, hell, YouTube allows like, you know, masturbation tips and dildo reviews and shit like that as long as it's not triple X rated. It's all over there. Remember House of, what was it? What was it? It was that, that gay one where they were having the most explicit sex. It was, it was hard, you know, X. It wasn't even like, you know, softcore male nudity or something. House of, uh, I can't remember. It was some video. It was there for a week before it got taken down. The ending of that video is a dude staring into the camera while a dude shits out sperm on his face. This was allowed on YouTube for a week under the auspices of it being artistic and educational. And yet at the same time, but, but if you put up a video that's edgy about like immigration or something, oh my god, it's terrible. It's a moral panic. Who gives a fucking shit? Pretty soon they'll probably go after swearing. To, it was excessive swearing on YouTube. Little Jimmy heard the F word three times today. And that's just on one sticks Hexenhammer video. Well, fucking little Jimmy doesn't need to be watching my shit. Why don't you tell his parents to do their job and, and fucking block my channel on YouTube? You shouldn't make YouTube have to do that for little Jimmy. And little Jimmy probably can bear it anyway. At least he's not watching the Young Turks. At least he's not watching something way, way worse. That's about all. Peace out.